we have been conditioned even the way we think and act. Welcome back to another episode of Rapid Subconscious Reprogramming Community. Here, Tommy Walker, the mind engineer, and today I want to share about programmed, how we have been programmed to think, sorry, there we go. So I got an overlap there. So, oh, I'm sorry, guys. Some technical things going on. Oh, no kidding. Here we go. I'm trying to put the camera back on. Here we go. So welcome back again. Tommy Walker, the mind engineer. Today, I want to talk about programming, how we have been programmed since childhood. We need to understand that when we were kids, we came with a blank slate. We didn't understand about love, about work, about women, about men, about friendship, about anything. We started being in situations and from those situations, we started learning the way we needed to behave and think. Imagine a person that you know is born in India normally is going to start believing in Hinduism. A person that is maybe from Europe, different countries they might follow, or you know, Protestants or Catholics because that's where they were born. If a person is born in Israel, they're going to start believing most of the time. Not all of them, of course, going to start believing in Judaism. So if you think about this, depending where you were born, you were conditioned, you were programmed to think and behave in specific ways. Right. And of course, to be loved and accepted by society, we tend to fit in. The problem is that we never stop to see if what we believe is what we really want to believe in. And I know it sounds weird, but a lot of people, unfortunately, start believing the things that they were taught and they never stop to start questioning what they believe in. So today I want to talk about this so that I can bring you the opportunity to start realizing that whatever you think about relationship, partners, friendship, food, whatever it is, money, it could have been something that you were programmed to believe in. And normally we're not even aware of those programs in relationships for, you know, many, many years. I'm not saying it has to be like that. I'm not saying it is like that. I'm not saying that. I believe in this, but for many years, women were supposed to stay at home and work and men were supposed to go out there and work, right? So women at home, men working and, uh, and a job, right? And that was supposed to be for many, many generations. The thing is, things are starting to change. The problem is that a man could have been programmed for another generations that he has to go out there and work and the woman has to stay home and take care of the kids. And maybe they he met a woman, they fell in love, they married. And now that they're married, they start finding, encountering these problems that the guy thinks that she should stay at home when she wants to have her own career. And now they start fighting and they start, you know, even divorcing maybe because they have different ways of thinking. And the guy doesn't stop to think, OK, wait, 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 why do I think this? Does it need to be this way? It's like the guy, I mean, it could be a guy or a woman, don't get me wrong, but the person doesn't question their beliefs. They just go with what they were taught. And unfortunately, maybe there was somebody else that is not okay with that. And that's when it starts clashing. I, maybe a woman comes from a house that there was a lot of yelling. So to share what she thinks, she tends to yell. And the guy feels that the yelling is a uh, lack of respect because at their house, there was no yelling. So the woman comes where her way of interacting in a relationship and the guy comes with their own way and they both never challenge their ways and they feel that the other person has to adjust and that's when things starts bumping into each other and again what i want to bring here is that we have been conditioned we have been programmed with everything the idea would be to start questioning what we believe in. Because as I'm saying, as we have been programmed, that doesn't mean that I truly want to believe that maybe deep down I believe that money is bad, that making a lot of money is wrong, that, you know, if you're not a Catholic, you're going to, you know, hell, or if you are not, you know, believing in this 
thing over here, there's something wrong with you or whatever it is. We tend to believe that what we believe is the truth and we never stop to challenge that. We need to start challenging our beliefs around money, around love, around success, around failure. That's a big one that I see in a lot of people. When we have negative stories, negative beliefs, limiting negative and false beliefs around different things like failure is bad because that's what I felt when I was a kid and I failed an exam or I failed a sport and my dad wasn't proud of me because I failed a sport, right? I'm going to start thinking that there's something wrong with me because of what's going on. And actually, I'm not being, imagine that my dad felt disappointed. My mom came in and said, hey, you know what? Your dad felt disappointment because he is insecure. He is, I don't know, he has self uh, confidence issues and he's trying to, you know, have you succeed so that he can feel good about himself. It has nothing to do with you. It has to do with him and his unresolved issues. Depending on the age, you're going to adjust that, of course. But just to give you an example, right? Maybe a lot of people didn't have somebody supporting them through different challenges like that. They failed an exam. And instead of just saying, hey, you know what? The system is failing you. I have worked with several people that have, you know, needed to repeat a grade at school and they felt like a failure as kids. But nobody sat down and taught them that the system had failed them. Seriously, listen what I'm saying. The system failed them because maybe they needed more time to learn something. Maybe they needed another way to learn. As we have found out many years ago, but not back, this is not from, you know, 50, 100 years ago. But imagine that we learn now that there are multiple intelligences. People, kids are more, you know, they're, they find it easier with numbers, but not so much with language or they find it easier with, you know, dancing and artists, right? And not so much, you know, reading. That doesn't mean that there's something wrong with them. They're just needing a different way to be taught. That's why there are schools that are adjusting more to these multiple intelligence where they have a lot of more movement. Remember when we were kids, we were sitting down in a, on, you know, on a chair for, I don't know, an hour or two hours till we had a break. Right. I don't remember exactly how long, but it was sitting down for 45 minutes an hour. That's crazy. Imagine a five year old, six year old sitting down for two hours straight, 45 minutes straight, trying to get them to learn something. Right. It was crazy back then. So now they're seeing that kid needs more movement, need to incorporate more art stuff to for them to learn. So maybe maths through, I don't know, drawing, right, drawing five pairs, five apples, adding them or how many vegetables are here and I didn't need to divide this in eight people, how many are they going to get and through more maybe artist things and they start getting it. So as we have been programmed, unfortunately, to think that failure is bad, these people and maybe had to do again, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, they started telling themselves that there was something wrong with them. And actually the system failed them, that the system wasn't ready to take care of the different type of learning styles that they were out there, trying to find a middle ground between the different ones. So we start understanding that we might have been programmed that love is about speaking my emotions, right? Maybe a person comes to a relationship where sharing love is sharing your emotions, or maybe the other person on the other side was shut down their emotions their entire life. And now they feel that talking about the emotion is something mad. So if we don't understand ourselves and we don't understand the other person, it's very difficult to be in relationships. This is one of the main reasons why so many people are there are struggling with the relationships and would rather be alone than being with somebody else because of the pain they're going through because they don't feel listened, they don't feel understood, they don't feel loved. And I have worked with several couples that they loved each other, but each of them did different things that triggered the other person. And many of them thought that this person was doing that because they were not loving them. And they started understanding how the mind works, how these behaviors were just a repetition of all program programmings, all conditionings, old behaviors and they were able to stay together, understand each other and build a better and com more communication in their relationship. And many are still together. 
But it's important to understand that if we don't start digging into our mind, understanding our deep rooted programs, conditionings around anything that we might be struggling with. Maybe you're struggling with, you know, finding another job. Maybe you're struggling with asking for a raise at work. Maybe you're struggling with asking for X amount of money in your business or in a job interview. No, they tend to offer you less and you don't speak up, right? Complacency, maybe a man or a woman, they're not being able to really speak up what they need. Or with a relationship, you're not being able to speak up what you really need. Maybe you need your, your partner to support you better in a specific area and you're not asking for that. You're expecting your partner to do that for you. But if you're not asking, how are they supposed to know what you need? And these are things that I see over and over and over again in relationships when they each think that the other person should do this, should not do this, when actually the other person maybe was programmed to do what they're doing. So it's understanding that and obviously being able to communicate and having the other person also question what they're doing. Because if you're getting triggered and you start screaming, because that's what you were taught at home and that's how you survived around, I don't know, five, 10 siblings, three, four, whatever siblings, right? That's what you learned you had to do to survive. Okay, you're not there anymore. But the mind, as I always say, it might be living in the past and doesn't recognize what's going on today. And it still thinks that it needs to scream. It needs to do this or that to survive. So when we're able to start understanding how the mind works, start digging into identifying those programs, those conditionings that we have, that we were taught as kids and that they can start changing, we can start changing our behaviors. As I always say, I'm gonna repeat it over and over again, behaviors are the byproduct of emotions. Emotions are the byproduct of beliefs. Beliefs meaning programming, conditioning that we had since childhood. So the conditioning, the stories we told ourselves create emotions. Emotions create behaviors. Most people try to change behaviors by dealing with the behaviors or dealing with emotions. A big guy out there, Dr. Dispenza, that teaches amazing things. One of the things that I don't concur with him, that I don't agree with him, is the dealing with the emotions. According to him, you should be able to just change your emotion. Tony Robbins teaches the same thing. You need to change your emotion, right? To change your state, to change how you are behaving today. And if you're not changing your emotions because you don't want to. No, if you're not being able to change your emotions it's because you're not tackling the belief that is triggering that emotion. If I don't understand the story behind the emotion, it's gonna be very difficult to force myself and Dr. Dispenza comes from a generation and generations back that authoritarianism was the main way to change things. And we need to understand that newer generations are not working through authoritarianism. Check kids. Kids are coming more defiant because they're fed up of authoritarianism. Generations have come through authoritarianism and kids are starting to become fed up of that. They question. They don't shut up. They don't shut up onto threats easily. Why? Because that is not working anymore. We need to find another way. And the way that I teach is love and acceptance of what is, right? That opens the mind to check what it believes, to question and to be maybe willing to change, but not through authoritarianism. Authoritarianism is old school. It's not working anymore. Seriously, it creates more pain. It makes changes out of fear. And I'd rather not change out of fear. I'd rather change out of love because fear takes a lot of energy. Fear creates a lot of the cases of stress and anxiety and even burnout. So we got to stop this nonsense. So we need to first be open to understanding that my preconceived things from the past, programming, um, the other way there was a conditioning might not be mine, most for sure. It's not yours. So start digging into your subconscious mind to find those programs, old programs that might have served you in the past, but are not serving you anymore. If I would have behaved, 
let's put it this way. If I would behave how I behaved 20 years ago, 10 years ago, um, no, 15 years ago with my actual wife, with my second wife, this relationship wouldn't have gotten to now 12 years together. It wouldn't have gotten here. And maybe if she behaved like she behaved in her past relationship with me, it wouldn't have reached where it have, where we are right now. So how are things the way they are now, right now, with our ups and downs like any relationship, but it's still you no know, a lot of love towards each other. I really love her and I want to be with her, right? With ups and downs, don't get me wrong, is by questioning what I believe in, my behaviors, understanding why they're there, where they come from, loving and accepting that there's a reason to be there, like maybe screaming, getting grumpy, shutting down when I'm feeling hurt or whatever, or shutting down when I feel rejected, loving and accepting that part of me to now bring another way. Because that's what that part of me needs, love and acceptance to change any program, to change any type of um, conditioning. We need love and acceptance. When you believe in something and you truly believe in that, if people start attacking you the, belief, the way you believe or start laughing at you because of the way you believe, you're not open to questioning what you believe in. You normally tend to shut down. But when you feel safe, when you feel love and acceptance, there are more chances for you to open up to question what you believe in and maybe be open to something different. This has been proven over and over again. So if you want to change something, you need to come with an open heart, open mind, with love and acceptance, with exploration mode. When you do that, you're going to be able to start revealing your deep-rooted programming, your deep-rooted conditioning to be able to start making changes. Thank you very much. If you're watching this on social media, hashtag live. If you're watching replay, hashtag replay. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe, follow for more of this insight and tools that I'm sharing, share with more people. The idea is to get these techniques out there and help as many people as possible. There's too much old school running out there and we need to start making changes the right way. Love can transform anything, but we need to start applying it. When you deny, when you judge, when you criticize, when you bring authoritarian that I shouldn't feel like this, I need to change, that is control, that is ego. From there, there's less change. More change comes from love. So I hope it makes, it makes sense. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next episode. Thank you everyone. Have a great week. Bye.